Hi everyone, this is Adam. For the last couple months, I have been working on setting up my own home television studio. I'm just about done having everything set up, so I wanted to make this video to take a look at everything and show you how it works. For my home studio, I came up with a list of requirements. First and foremost, I needed to have the ability to broadcast live video on the internet. I needed to be able to switch between multiple cameras, do live graphics, video playback for pre-produced elements, and audio mixing from various sources. Although I wanted the system to be fully high definition, at this point I simply couldn't afford it. So even though I had to go a standard definition this time, I wanted to make sure I could keep a clear upgrade path to high definition open for the future. Starting with the cameras, I picked up a couple of used Canon Geo Wens off of eBay. Yes, I know these cameras are standard definition and I know they are really old now, but they're still really good quality. Plus they have a 16x9 anamorphic widescreen mode that still looks pretty decent. Using these cameras as a base, I was able to set them up in a studio configuration. Each camera is on a dolly mounted tripod with a fluid video head. Mounted on each tripod handle is a camera control allowing for zoom and focus. On top of the camera is a full color widescreen monitor so the camera operators don't have to try to use the horrible low resolution flip out screen that's on the Canon GL1. Also on the tripod is a Blackmagic analog to SDI converter. This takes the S video output from the camera and converts it to a digital SDI signal. The video switcher I'm using only accepts digital inputs so I have to have this. Finally, I also mounted a surge protector to the tripod to provide power for everything on the camera and provide some level of surge protection. This way, the only cords coming off of the tripod are the B and C cable for SDI and a power cord. Moving inside, my office where I usually do my video editing now also doubles as my broadcast control room. On my desk is a small 4U rack that houses just about everything I need. Starting at the bottom of the rack, we have the Blackmagic Television Studio Switcher. This is a broadcast grade hardware video switcher. It can accept six digital inputs in either standard or high definition. Immediately above the switcher in my rack is a ventilation panel. There are some fans inside to help keep things cool. The video switcher can get pretty warm when it's running. Blackmagic says this is normal, but I still feel better knowing that I'm taking steps to keep it cool. The next thing in my rack is a DVD player. This was a simple, cheap, rack-mountable DVD player I got off of Amazon.com. The reviews of it were pretty poor, but for my needs, just doing basic playback, it works great. It also supports USB and memory cards, so for videos that I need to play back when doing a show, I can copy the videos to a memory card or a thumb drive plug them in and have them there. I don't have to burn a DVD every time I'm doing a show and I need different video elements. The only thing I'm using this for is to convert analog audio to digital audio to go into the video switcher. My audio setup is pretty simple. I have a mixer where I plug in all my input sources, including the audio out from the DVD player. This lets me mix the audio for doing a broadcast. This is a feedback destroyer, but I'm using it for its delay function. When the analog video from the cameras is converted to digital, and again when that digital video is synced to the same time base to go into the switcher, it adds a slight delay. The delay is very slight, but it's enough to be annoying if the audio is not delayed. You can end up with the audio slightly out of sync with the picture. Using the delay function on the feedback destroyer, I can bring the audio back in line with the video to maintain proper lip sync. You may be wondering why I'm even bothering sending the audio into the video switcher instead of taking the video out of the switcher and taking the audio out of my mixer and combining them later on down the chain. The reason I'm doing this is the switcher also has a built-in H.264 video encoder. This allows me to have the video and audio encoded into a single H.264 stream and then stream that live on the internet. To save some money in space, I didn't purchase any additional monitors for a control room or any hardware control panel for the switcher. Instead, I'm using this software control panel. It mimics the look of a hardware switcher control panel and it works just the way you would expect. Only instead of an actual hardware device sitting on my desk, 
I click buttons on the screen or I use keyboard shortcuts. I'm also using one of my computer monitors connected to the multi-view output on the switcher to see all my video sources and my preview and program monitor. This works pretty well for my needs, it lets me control all the functions of the switcher, including the live graphics. So right now at this point, I can do a live multi-camera webcast using both the cameras with pre-produced video elements, video graphics, and stream it in high quality but still standard definition online. Look into the future, I'd like to make some changes though. Eventually I plan to upgrade to full high definition, getting rid of the Canon GL1 cameras and replacing them with something that's actually high definition. On the control room side of things, I also hope to get an additional feedback destroyer. Right now I can only broadcast in single channel audio. One feedback destroyer only works on one channel of audio. If I want to do stereo sound, I have to add a second one. Another thing I hope to add in the future is an actual hardware control panel for the switcher. The software control panel works great, but you just can't be as fast on it as you can in a dedicated hardware control panel. Far down the road, eventually I hope to purchase a dedicated production vehicle and move everything you see with this setup into that production vehicle. That way I can have a completely mobile, high definition live webcasting system and can pretty much do a live webcast from anywhere I can get a mobile internet connection.